There are two species of black and white colobus monkeys in Kenya. The best known are the Gereza, found in the highlands. But few people know about the unique Angolan colobus, which inhabits the coastal forests. Colobus monkey, it's just a gentle nature, very simple guys. All they need is trees. That's what they eat, that's where they live, that's how they move. Like very simple guys. But this stunning and rare monkey is facing a battle for survival. I can see for the last five years I've been here, I can see the destruction of the forest happening. I can really see it happening. And uh, like if nothing is done about this, I think in the 10 years, they'll be in really, really big trouble. This week on Wildlife Warriors, join me as I meet Anthony Gashuna in Diani and learn about the protection of the Angolan colobus monkey. Diani is home to four species of monkeys, and one of them is the Angolan colobus monkey. Angolan colobus monkeys, unlike their cousins, the Gereza, are found only in the Kenyan coast in these coastal forests. The only other place that they're found in Africa is in tropical forests, the jungles of the Congo. Their name, Angolan colobus, comes from the country of Angola, where in fact, they are extremely endangered. These amazing animals live only in dense forests. They only eat leaves and they live in family groups that spread throughout these coastal forests. But in Kenya, these forests are critically endangered. There's one right in front of me. Let's have a look. It's eating some leaves. It's right there. It's right there. I think it's showing off. These monkeys only eat leaves and unripe fruit. They spend most of their day feeding and then sleeping because their digestive system, which is a little bit like a cow's, takes a very long time to digest leaves. The family groups are quite small, only 10 to 12 animals. And this is a subadult. I think it's a male. Unlike so many of the monkeys here in coastal Kenya, these animals don't really disturb people at all. They don't raid farms, they don't raid dustbins, and they don't jump on tables in restaurants and steal food. All they're interested in is leaves. And that's a problem because their habitat, this forest on the coast of Kenya, is critically endangered. Coastal forests are unique these trees are growing on coral. We call it a coral rag forest. And because of the booming tourism industry, these forests are being chopped and carved up and roads are being built through this area to make them habitable, mainly for tourists. These colobus monkeys are having salad for lunch. I'm surrounded by them. There's one right here munching on leaves, a couple more over here and still more out over here scratching themselves. Some of them are sleeping, some of them are feeding. Let's see if we can get closer to this big male over here. His name is Matata. Let's go. I'm going to pretend I'm not interested in him because if I look at him, he might get a bit worried.
I have to keep averting my gaze, try not to look directly at him in his face, otherwise he'll think I'm up to something. This is an extraordinary experience to be so close to an animal that is actually very, very shy. There's two of them here, there's Matata. I'm not gonna look at him in the eye because I don't want him to jump away. He's just relaxing. He's come down to the lower level of the forest where it's a lot cooler than higher up where the sun is blazing and the whole family is scattered around us. You can see these unusual monkeys are jet black in color. They have white epaulets on their shoulders, white whiskers on their face and a very long tail that is tipped also white and otherwise they are jet black. And this white black contrast is how they communicate in the forest. They leap about flashing their shoulders and their tails and that's how they send information to other troops in the area. They're quite territorial. One of the real peculiarities about these monkeys is that although they're primates, and the thing that makes us different from most animals is our opposable thumb, these guys don't actually have a thumb. Diani is home to approximately 400 colobus monkeys. Anthony has come to join me to tell me more about them. Tony, this is just amazing. Who are these? Who is this family? This is our Columbus Conservation Home Troop. Uh, I'll introduce you to them. We have Matata right here. He's the alpha male. Right how, now. how do you know he's a male? Uh, from his size. And uh, also, like, uh, we take recordings of our home troop every day. So, like, uh, Matata, we know him very well. Yeah. And I can tell you uh, that is Elewa. Uh -huh. um, Elewa. You can see she has a small baby with her. Her baby is called Endelea. Oh, that's the little tail that we yeah, can see. Yeah, the little tail you can see right there. there. Yeah. Okay. It's Endelea. That's and a nice also, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also have Donka. Which one is Donka? Donka is uh, just a bit older than Endelea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we have Dogo, the really, really pregnant one, right there. Yeah. Wow, she looks like she's about to have the baby any minute. Any minute. How, from when do you now. expect that baby to be born? Any time in October. The first time I saw a Colobus monkey, that was in 2011, as I came to Colobus Conservation as a volunteer. I'd never seen these guys before. And we had walked right past them with the school. At two, and the tour guide took us later and told them, oh, look at those guys, they're right up here. And nobody, like, they're really quiet guys, you'd never notice them. Like. Yeah, so we have nine of them in total. So every day you're monitoring these troops? Every day we take a number of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you monitor? What are you actually looking for? I'm looking at their health. I'm also looking for any swellings. Dog is about to give birth, so they're going to be 10 in number, and we also have this recording. So you're tracking the birth of the baby? Exactly. What does the new baby look like? Uh, the baby is born completely white in colour. <laughs> yeah, and after three months, it goes to the black and white, just like the mom. Just like that little baby in Delea? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We also have some monkeys in rehabilitation. Uh, I'll just go and introduce you to them. Let's go. The Monkey Rehabilitation Centre is where monkeys from the area with injuries or babies that have been orphaned are rescued by Anthony and his team. Here, they will be well looked after by a team of helpers, including the monkey chef, who Anthony takes me to meet. Anthony Kashuna works at the Colobus Conservation in Diani on the Kenyan coast. Here, they rescue monkeys that have been injured or orphaned and rehabilitate them before releasing them back into the wild. Paula, this is our rehabilitation center, uh, but because it's very early in the morning, we have to prepare the monkey food. And uh, right here, this is our monkey kitchen. Monkey yeah. kitchen? Yeah, monkey kitchen. Uh, here we have Ted. Uh, he's preparing the food for the monkeys. Hi, Dad. Hi, so you're the monkey chef? Yeah, I'm the monkey chef. <laughs> Great. What are you preparing today? Uh, so today, today I'm preparing vegetables for the monkeys. There's carrots, there's watermelon, there's cabbage, and a bit of kale. Yeah, so that's basically it. But I, I see you've also got honey. Yeah. You give them honey? Yeah, we do, but not directly. We usually kind of like put it along with seeds. Okay. Yeah. Lucky monkeys. Yeah. 
Well, your monkeys are getting a very nice breakfast here. Yeah, it's better you, than the breakfast I had. Yeah, but we have to hide that food. That's why we have the basket here. This is called enrichment. Uh, we want to we want the monkeys to actually look for their food when they're out in the forest. Oh, so so we have to trade it? them. Yeah. Let's see how do you do it. Okay, so you put the bit of the food inside here. Mm -hmm. Already having like a bit of leaf. Yeah. So we put a bit of food. Then we hide it again. Oh, I get it. Yeah. So the monkeys don't know that there's food in there. They have to search yeah, for it. Yeah, they have to learn how to look for the food like so when in the wild. Yeah, is yeah. about them yeah. having to forage like as if they're in the wild. Exactly. Why is that important? Uh, they have to learn how to live out in the wild because they're not going to stay with them forever. Uh, these guys are about to be released like in next October. So we have to teach them how to become wild, how to look for food out awesome. when they're out in the wild. Yeah. And every day we do this enrichment. To do it tomorrow is something different. Fantastic. On Friday something so different. So different yeah. kinds of enrichments. Exactly. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. let's see them going to the to the okay. actual yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. have to take care of the monkeys that we have at rehabilitation center, uh, make sure they're well fed and also the enrichment goes in. Enrichment is really important to uh, the rehabilitation center because we have to train these orphans how to survive in the wild. These are not like your ordinary wild monkeys. The ordinary wild monkeys know how to look out for predators, know how to look for food, but these guys who have been hundred, they basically expect you to look after them. And as we don't keep monkeys like long term, we have to release them out in the wild and they have to find those skills to live out in the wild. So Tony, each of these monkeys has come from the wild. Yes. Can you tell me some of their stories? Yeah, so these monkeys have come from different places, from Kuala, some even have come from Mombasa. But because uh, people know us, we have a hotline. They call us whenever they have uh, an infant monkey. And when we bring it here, we take care of it. Um, it's going to stay in the house with a human uh, to give it like just the way the mom will look after it. This one here, this female, she's got such a peculiar face. It's like you could never miss her. She's got a very peculiar coloration. Um, does she have a name? This is Shuja. Shuja. Yeah, that yeah. means hero. That means hero, yeah. Because he came on Heroes Day, Masha Day. Yeah. It's, a, it's a he or a she? It's a he, sorry. Oh, it's a he. It's a he, <laughs> it's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so tell me about the story of Shuja. Uh, Shuja is actually an orphan. Uh, we got a call uh, from one of the hotels. Uh, the security guys, they have our number. They found them all alone. And they called us because they know us guys take care of the baby monkeys, yeah. And so why would he be abandoned as a baby? Uh, we suspect like his mom had passed on, uh, so like there's nobody else to look after him. Even other true members cannot look after him. And so all these monkeys in this particular cage, what's happening? Because you have several cages, right? In total, we have nine of them. Right now, uh, they're not all together because we have to do like a slow introduction because we have the dominant ones and the less dominant and sooner or later they'll have to be put together in one enclosure and then like hopefully next year in October we're going to release them out into the wild. Colibus Conservation was opened in 1997 and just last year they attended 191 cases. Some of these were victims of road accidents Others were injured in conflict with communities. To deal with the more serious injuries, they run a monkey hospital. We got a call out our hotline and that there was a Sykes monkey that has a broken leg. And when we went out to him, he had the broken leg and because he had a wound on his head, he was kind of disorientated. So we caught him and brought him here to the Columbus Conservation. And on the same day, we did an X-ray on his leg and it was actually broken, so uh, we tried to fix the leg, uh, but it got infected, so we had to amputate the leg, but he's doing okay right now. We're at the monkey hospital here at Colobus Conservation, and Baharini is the third patient being examined by the doctor. Baharini has a wound on his leg, and uh, he's having it checked right now. seems he has an infection. His temperature is running high, so he's had some medication for that. I think this is the only hospital of its kind in all of East Africa where the patients are only monkeys.
I'm really pleased to see that this wound is healing very well. Monkeys are surprising animals. They sometimes recover from what might look like impossible wounds and fractures. I'm pleased to report that Bahari's operation was a success and his rehabilitation is going well. But not all the patients survive. What people don't realize is us human beings have actually come into their territory. We should at least learn to coexist with these animals because uh, they're just like us, they hurt like we do, but they have feelings too. Anthony's quest to help save monkeys from injuries on the roads is a continuous battle. He's building a unique bridge system to help monkeys cross the road safely. If you walk around Iani, you'll come across a number of these bridges built above the road where monkeys can cross. They are used by all species of monkeys here. The other big threat that the monkeys face is the primate uh, vehicle collisions. The monkeys have to cross the road because the road has cut through their territory and they have to move from one place to the other because they are going to look for food from the other side of the road and come back. And they have to intermingle like, uh, with the other monkeys that are on the other side of the road. Colobus monkeys are boreal in nature. They spend most of the time up on the trees. That means they have no skills like terrestrial animals. So when they come down to cross the road, basically, they're just taking their chances. The baboons, like the terrestrial animals, they spend most of the time on the ground. They know how to cross the road. They can look left, right. So what has Columbus Conservation? We have built bridges for them. We put a canopy up on the road for them to cross safely. These bridges, known as collar bridges, are literally saving the lives of Columbus monkeys. The main threat that they face here is from the constant traffic on the roads where they often get hit. Anthony wants to show me how they are made. So, what's happening in here? Yes, uh, here we have Mutu. We're about to build a color bridge. Uh, we're going to put it up the road so the monkeys can cross the road safely. Okay. Yeah, and Mutu's in charge of that. He's just going to show you what to do. Yes. Oh. Okay. What do I need to do? I, I, uh, yeah, just thread that through the... The string, yes. <laughs> okay. Just throw it through. Yes. Like that? Yes. Now you're going to fit that into that small hole right there, just like this. Yes. Like just, that? Yes. Whoopsie. Just give me some. I'm going to fit mine through. Just going to take that part right there. Oh, it through. one yeah. round. Yeah, one round, yeah. How quickly can you guys make a bridge? Uh, this one can take maybe uh, maybe two hours. Two hours to make a bridge? Like, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And how many bridges do you have? Uh, how many bridges do you have? 28. 28 bridges. Thread it through. I'm getting good at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. I, I might take your job, Mutu, sorry. <laughs> I'm now the bridge. Builder. Yeah. This is quite uh, a simple process. Yeah. So explain to me, I've seen some of these pipes are long and some of them are short. Some are hose pipes and some are different kinds of pipes. Let's see, let's get them in. Look at that bridge, perfect. I see, you it's see getting it's come together, yeah? wide in some places yeah. and narrow on the other places. Why do you do that, Tony? Uh, just to make the bridge more stable, but so you're div using different materials, yeah? Yeah, because uh, when it's, it's a, especially a really long bridge, uh, you don't want it to dance when the monkeys are crossing the road, you know? You want it to I be see. as much as possible. You want stable. it to be stable as exactly. possible. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it gets really windy, so the more stable it is, the more the monkeys feel secure when they're crossing it. Yes. Where you see a bridge is a place where the monkeys are knocked down the most because you also take that one with them. So they're strategically the located strategically where located. the monkeys like to cross. Exactly. And this makes an incredible 
simple, fast to make and very cheap to create bridge for the monkeys to cross the highway safely. This is a really an amazing innovation that has come out of Kenya to help save these wonderful monkeys that we have in this area. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing now. Okay, thank you for uh, correcting me. <laughs> yeah, that's Martin, you always make sure you do the right thing. I see, okay. Tony and I have just made a short section of bridge as a demonstration. It took us about 10 minutes, of course, with the help of the whole team. We have Ted cutting and we have Mwitu who has been arranging things for us. And what you see here is a bridge made from conduit pipes, some hose pipe sections, and some sections are short and other sections are longer. And this is necessary to give this bridge stability so that the monkeys can walk along it without the thing collapsing on them, but also get some grip on these hose pipes. The bridges are a great way to help monkeys cross the road and it's working well. But there is another danger that still threatens the monkeys' lives. And it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Tourism is actually the backbone of Diani. If there are no tourists coming here, even for us at Colobus Conservation, the project that we do, we are affected. Tourism is very important in Diani. I'd even say, I think 80% of uh, the jobs here in Diani are tourist-related. And with this high influx of tourism comes businesses, hotels, and other facilities to cater for them. The downside of this means that the forest, which is the monkey's natural habitat, is being cut down. One of the biggest threats to the primates in this area is forest habitat loss and degradation. And uh, Tony and I have been given our dream wish come true. Daryl Van Dyke has agreed to fly us over the Diani forest so that we can see what's happening to this forest habitat. Let's go. Hey, Daryl. Okay, right. So I think you're in the front, um, okay. Tony. It's your lucky day, man. For now, thanks to the help of Colobus Conservation, there is hope for these beautiful and unique monkeys. For Anthony, choosing a life dedicated to saving them is something he will never regret. The Colobus monkeys are leaf eaters. They don't feed on any fruit, especially indigenous trees. That's why indigenous trees are really important for them. If you're going to replace the whole of Kuala with exotic trees, then you lose those indigenous trees, then the Colobus monkeys will be in really, really big trouble. The future of the Colobus monkeys might depend on the efforts by the community who have set aside sacred forests like Kaya Kinondo, and property owners could also play an important role by making forest protection a priority. Conservation is actually very fulfilling. Uh, you get to meet wonderful people, you get to learn about animals, interact with them. It's really, really fulfilling. Yeah, I encourage everyone to kind of play their part.
If you want to help our amazing wildlife, why don't you start a Wildlife Warriors Club in your school? To learn more about this program, please visit our website 